Hello viewers, Super GT here. Now, a question I get asked all the time is, will you marry me? But apart from that, the question I get asked the most is, what is better, Forza 7 or Gran Turismo Sport? Now's a good time to finally answer that question. I've never really committed to an answer, so I've always wanted to wait for a video. And well, here we are, this is the video. So I'm gonna go through my thoughts on both games and give you a verdict. Now I'm gonna be reviewing the games based on how they are now. It is important to know that both games were a lot different at launch, so Forza 7 specifically had a lot of issues with the, especially the online, a lot of crashing, not just in the race, but the game just crashed. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport didn't have the GT League. You know, there's lots of different differences between how the games launched and how they are now, but I'm reviewing them based on how they are at this current state, in the middle of August. So let's just begin just with the overall amount of content. So Forza shipped with 700 cars, Gran Turismo with 162. Uh, since the launch, they've added 69 in Gran Turismo. They've added 61 in Forza. So there's a clear difference. Yes, Gran Turismo has added more and they were free, whereas you had to pay for quite a lot of the ones in, in Forza, the DLC cars that is. But still there's only one winner. Uh, Forza definitely has a lot more cars, a lot more content on that front. Uh, a lot of the cars you could argue in Forza are not always related so a lot of them it looks like they've imported them from horizon there's a lot of suvs which you know i suppose you could race an suv but it doesn't really fit in with sort of the motorsport genre so a lot of the cars do seem a bit you know just filler but e even if you took them out forza still has a lot more the quality of cars you could say especially with the gt cars forza is kind of out of date in many cases they have they have added some 2018 gt cars to the game uh, so depending on the division that you're racing in um, it can be better in some way so like some gt cars a lot of gt cars in gran turismo on the overall spectrum uh, forza definitely has a lot more wider range of cars and 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 more of them uh, track list is fairly similar story so gran turismo shipping with 17 locations uh, now up to 21 after dlc and forza shipping with 32 variation or sorry 32 locations and 120 variations so forza has a lot more um, just like it does for the car list gran turismo uh, has added dlc so we've actually had seven extra circuits added Whereas perhaps worryingly, Forza had, has, had, uh, has had no tracks added to the game since, since it launched. It, it is a clear winner in terms of overall amount of content. It's a clear winner for Forza Motorsport. I, I, again, you could comment on th the tracks in Forza. I do think the fictional circuits are superior in Gran Turismo. Polyphony are much better at making a fictional circuit than Turn 10 are. Uh, but there are more tracks. There are more tracks in in Forza Motorsport. Uh, something else, though, you could say, let's say, let's take Suzuka, which is in both games. I think the way it's modelled is superior in Gran Turismo, but that's just my own personal opinion. So on the whole, content content wise, Gran Turismo seems to be with what they have. A they've done a little bit better with what they have, but there is a lot more and a lot more variation in Forza Seven. So next up, graphics. Both games do a very good job, and it's not really a surprise because Forza Motorsport is sort of the flagship racing game for Xbox, and Gran Turismo is the flagship for PlayStation. So it's not a surprise that they both really worked on graphics, and they both do a very good job. I think both games, I can't really fault them both. They both have very good graphics on the whole. In terms of the replays though, um, we can touch on replays quickly. I do think the Gran Turismo does do a better job in replays and that's not just the graphics but it's also functionality because in terms of the way that the replays work in Gran Turismo it's far superior to the way it works in Forza. So let me give you some examples. In Forza I'm trying to skip for a replay from the front from the start of the replay to the middle it's really slow it takes ages to skip through. In Gran Turismo you can skip through really quickly and really precisely. Also in Gran Turismo there's this ability to save a lot of replays in Forza. You can only save 10. In Gran Turismo, you can save like, I don't know, about 100. You have a lot more space to save replays, which is a good feature. And also, when you do save replays in Forza, you watch them and there's cars missing. There's cars that were in the race and they're not showing up in the replay. 
So the the race just seems weird because there's invisible cars. You know, that they that they were there during the race, but then they're just, they're just not there in the replay, which can make it look a little bit weird. There's also loads of smoke on lap one in the replay, so you try and fast forward the replay, and there's just loads of smoke everywhere for some weird reasons. Uh, the graphics aren't anywhere near as good as well in the Forza replays. So just a quick note on that: replays definitely better on on Gran Turismo. So let's talk about the physics now. On the whole, I would say that. Uh, Forza feels soft, whereas Gran Turismo feels stiff. And um, by that I mean on Forza I feel as though I can feel more of the car going on. I feel as I can feel sort of the independent workings of you know, the mechanics of the car. In Gran Turismo I can't really feel that. The, the physics can feel a little bit one-dimensional at times on Gran Turismo. Um, but as at times. I think on the whole though, both games do have good physics systems and I do like, I do really enjoy playing both. I can sense more sort of differences between the cars and Forza though. So if you take a, a European hatchback compared to an American muscle car, I feel like I can feel the difference a lot more. The only downside I suppose is that sometimes in Forza they over exaggerate it. So there is a difference, it's good that you can feel a difference, but the differences are sometimes so strong. For example, you drive the cover car, the Porsche GT3, GT2 RS, and you know it, it's the way that the weight distribution is uh, with the where where the engine is. It just feels so weird. It's just sort of overdone in the game. So it's good that you can feel differences in cars, but sometimes it's overdone. Uh, whereas Grand Turismo can feel a little bit stale sometimes at times. But that's on a controller though, in Chase Cam, which is an important thing to note. I don't think the chase cam is quite as good in Gran Turismo as it is in Forza. But if you're playing on a wheel, in let's say hood cam or wheel cam, then you're, you're going to have a way better experience on Gran Turismo, much better. And there's, first off, I mean, there's actual balance between a controller and a wheel in the game, so you can be good on both. And whereas on, on Forza, you just, you're just never really going to be competitive on a wheel. You can set good times, you, you know, you, you can be good, you're, just, you're not going to be the best. It's just, it's just, it's just impossible. Uh, all the best players at FRC are always using a controller. So on the whole, in terms of physics, I think both games do a very good job. I don't really have any complaints about either game. Uh, I enjoy the feel of both games, and I don't really have a problem with how they both work. I think Forza just about edges it, and that might seem like a weird decision or a weird verdict. But I do think Forza just about edges it in terms of sort of the way that the car feels at times. Uh, but but I do I, I do still love the way that the cars feel in Gran Turismo Sport. So now let's talk about the single player. So Forza has the Drivers Cup, where you're playing for a, a, a load of series based on the divisions of the car. So you choose a division of car like Forza GT or Hatchback or whatever. You do a couple of races, build up some points, and then and then you win, and then you do that over and over again. You have a bit of variation with the showcase events, with the endurance events, and. On the whole, it feels like a repetitive grind to me, uh, whereas Gran Turismo, it feels a little bit more varied. So you've got you've got quite a few more modes. You've got the mission challenge, so that's in a way just like the showcases, so sort of set pieces events where you know set a lap around here, or you're starting last on this track, try and finish first, or ten laps around here. It's a bit more varied. Then you've got the circuit experience. So you can learn each each track. You can split it up into sectors, learn each corner, learn each sector, and then try to tackle a whole lap around a circuit. So that's a good, really good way to learn a track. And then you also have the driver school, which is a really good way for beginners to get to grips with the game. Or anyone, you don't even have to be a beginner. I suppose it's good for everyone just to really understand how Gran Turismo Sport works. Accelerating away from the line, braking, you know, turning, just all the, all the really simple stuff, but it's always good to know. And I, I think all these three modes really add some variation to the game. Forza does have time attack mode now, and I feel like the time attack mode is much better in Forza than it is in Gran Turismo. There's no real leaderboards as on, on Gran Turismo, uh, other than just your private, private times, the times that you've set. There's no comparison to real other people in the time trial mode, that is. Uh, Forza 7's done that a little bit better. It has only implemented that recently, but it is there now. So the single player on the whole, it's almost like the way I describe the content. In Forza, there's more of it, but I think in Gran Turismo, it's, um, 
it's a bit more refined and there's more a little more variation to it. I, I actually prefer the single player in Gran Turismo, which is which is weird because at the beginning of the game, when the game first came out, it almost seemed like single player should be overlooked. It's all about the online on this game, but I don't know. I think single player is actually okay in Gran Turismo. I, I, I like the variation of the modes. They've added the GT League mode, so you've got the single player races as well. One big issue though that Gran Turismo Sport does have is the AI. Uh, Forza has the same issue to be fair. The, the AI in both games isn't very good. It is better in Forza 7 though, I would say that. In in uh, Gran Turismo, the way that the races work, you, you get put into the middle of this race, so the leader's like half a lap ahead, the guy in last is a half a lap behind, and then you can't, it's almost like you've gone into the middle of someone else's race and you have to finish, and the AI don't really give you a challenge at all and they're, they're a bit just a bit off in Forza at least you can change the difficulty setting so uh, you, you can make them you can tailor them to how you how quick you are at least in, in Gran Turismo there is an option it's just a one one setting and it's just just beat them basically in Forza you can kind of tailor them to your to your needs so you can actually get a race out of the AI. Not that it's going to be an amazing race always, but you know the, the option is there. That the sort of the the options for single player races are slightly better in Forza. You're gonna you're, you're much more likely to actually get a race out of the AI. So if you're if you're there for single player racing, I think Gran Turismo has more variation, but um, Forza has more. There's, it takes longer to complete, and the AI is better. Not that it's good, but it's better than it is a Gran Turismo. Okay, let's let's talk about the the big issues now. The multiplayer, the online. This is where I think most of these games are played these days in the online space. And for me, it's the most important factor. So both games go about it in two different ways. In Gran Turismo, you have the daily races or weekly races. You have the public open lobbies. And you have the FIA races. In Forza, you have the hoppers, which are very open. You have the private created lobbies, and you have uh, Forza RC, which I suppose you can add as another element of the online play. Now, to be honest, I think there's only one winner, and it's going to be Gran Turismo Sport. And there's, there's a plethora of reasons why Gran Turismo Sport has a much better online experience. So the main thing that sticks out for me is the driver rating and sportsmanship rating system. You get ranked based on how good you are as a driver, so how good your results are, how well you qualify, and you get rated as a sportsman. So are you punting people off every two seconds or are you really trying to avoid contact? And eventually, you're gonna get matched up with people who are, who are balanced with you. On Forza, the hoppers are very open, so you can anyone can join in any car they like, and that can be a good thing, or maybe a casual player just wants to jump in but it isn't good for the overall quality of the racing because you get matched up with anyone it seems and uh, there's a massive disparity quite often in the in the quality of drivers so you have really good drivers and you have really bad drivers at the same time and it's not really good for either party the bad drivers are just getting roundly beaten and they're not really learning anything and then the people at the front again they're just winning so easily that they're not really having a good experience what, what you need is a system which can match you up with people who are even with you and Gran Turismo does that with the driver rating and the sportsmanship rating so both those systems in place balances up the racing a lot more and the overall feel I get from Gran Turismo is that it's, very more, it, it's a lot more specific or restricted but that's not necessarily a bad thing it just means that you have to race at certain times in certain cars but the racing quality is a lot higher uh, whereas on Forza it's very open, race whenever you want, but the quality of the racing is going to be as good. In Gran Turismo there are incentives to race cleanly as well, whereas there are none on Forza. There's just no incentive to be a proper racing driver. So on Gran Turismo you have the sportsmanship message. Before you do any sport mode race you have to watch this video, or two videos. One which tells you what is sportsmanship, what is sportsmanship? and the second one just shows you a load of examples of someone being a bit of an idiot, just swerving and you know crashing off their opponents and just don't do these things. So before anyone goes online, they kind of have to have an idea. They have to watch these videos and have an idea of how to be a clean, respectful person. There's also extra credits for when you 
complete a clean race, so that's another incentive. And of course the other incentive to preserve your driver rating or your sportsmanship rating. There are also penalties in Gran Turismo, so penalty system restricts you if you push someone off or you cut a corner, you get a time-based penalty to slow down to serve it. Forza doesn't have that system in place yet, they are working on the race adjudication system, but currently there's there's nothing to stop you, you know, from just pummeling to the side of someone and then just carrying on and you know there's nothing to stop you from doing that and getting no penalty. At least in Gran Turismo, there's some sort of deterrent. You get a penalty. It worsens your sportsmanship rating for a start, so you're going to start worse, racing with worse people if you start doing that. And you're going to get a worse result in that race because you're going to have to slow down. So Gran Turismo has plenty of um, incentives to be a, a better driver. It's, it feels a little bit more restricted with the weekly races because if you don't like those races, then you're kind of stuck. Uh, you have to race certain cars at certain times of the day, but that does, on the whole, heighten the quality of the racing, especially with the daily races because you have to qualify, you have to, you have to learn the track, you have to learn the car that you're going to use before you enter the race. You can't just, oh, I just want to enter this car, this track. I don't know where the breaking point is on turn one. I'm just going to jump in, and more often than not, people don't know where the braking falls are, and then it just causes, you know, it's, it's like a bowling alley at turn one. So th there's many reasons why the quality of racing is higher in the Land Turismo Sport and it's a lot, you know, it's a lot low in Forza. Um, the main strength of Forza is how open and unrestricted it is. So there is strength and you can still get very good racing, it just depends on the lobby that you go into and I suppose the time of day and who you get matched up with. Sometimes you have to get lucky to get a good race. I think on the whole um, the racing's a lot closer, it's a lot cleaner, a lot more respectful on Gran Turismo. The penalty system can throw up some annoying things and there's still dirty players in Grand Turismo, you know, it doesn't get rid of them. It's, I think that's just that problem is always going to exist in a racing game, but the system in Grand Turismo does a better job of trying to eliminate the bad drivers or, you know, filter them to another place so that a clean driver doesn't have to deal with them. Oh, and there's also ghosted back markers. How good is that on Grand Turismo? You don't have to worry about getting pummeled into turn one by somebody you just lapped. You know, on Forza, you're lapping someone off on lap three of a short race, and you think, you know, I should not be lapping someone on a three lap race, and yet they're there just to push you off. You're not ghosted, or they're not ghosted, and it just causes mayhem. So, again, another reason why Gran Turismo is a little bit better in that respect. And the FIA races in Gran Turismo are really high quality as well, quite often. Um, the drivers are very good, and again, the, the disparity in level is isn't big so you can get a race of 20 people and they're all within a second of each other and you get a train for them because of how close everyone is so again the balance is really good there in terms of the FIA races and it feels like the racing is multi-dimensional so this is the next topic here which is the feel of motorsport so my main point there was the racing can feel one-dimensional in Forza I feel as though you just need to be quick and fairly consistent and that's it whereas in Gran Turismo you need to be quick and consistent but you also need to manage your tyres and your fuel and your strategy and your brake balance and your fuel mixture so yes you have to be fast in both games of course as a racing game but there's also many other challenges in Gran Turismo Sport which makes it multi-dimensional and I, I think real life racing is multi-dimensional. These days you need to be managing lots of factors. You need to, be ma you need to manage your tyres. You need to manage your fuel. You need to manage your brake bias. So these are things that carry over from real motorsport into the game quite well. There's also better pit stops in Gran Turismo. So you actually have a pit crew. You have to choose uh, which tyres to put on. You have to choose when to uh, stop fueling. So you can, change, you can vary the strategy slightly. Forza does have tyre wear and it does have fuel use but it's, it's very one-dimensional. You don't really ever focus on it at all. You never really have to pay attention to it. Uh, so so in that front, it's there, but it's not very well implemented. And of course, the pit stop in the water, well, you just drive in and then an invisible pit crew fit, magically fixes your car and you drive out and there's no interaction at all. Um, Gran Turismo, even though it doesn't have the word motorsport in the title, it, it captures the essence of motorsport a lot better than um, for the motorsport. 
perhaps another thing related to both of these things, perhaps related to the, the feel of most sport and to the online experience, uh, rolling starts. So in Grand Turismo you're spread out slightly and you're rolling across the line. So uh, the carnage into turn one is, is much minimized as a result of that. Grand Turismo, 24 players, which you could argue is too many, although it's good to have the option to have more players. It does often result in carnage at turn one because you've got 24 people who are all mismatched going to turn one. They're all very close, bunched together, and it, you, know, you know what happens next, uh, carnage. So on balance of everything, the feel of motorsport far superior in, in, in Gran Turismo and just the online experience is far superior in Gran Turismo because you can have clean racing. And I suppose if you're a more casual player who just wants open racing and it doesn't matter too much, then I think Forza is still very good. And, it, and you know, Forza still can produce very good racing. It's just a lot harder to find. So perhaps let's move on to some like sort of smaller subjects. So I think graphics, physics, online and single player they're the most important things to review but we, we're going to talk about some other things here so uh, the paint and customization both games have a system where you can paint your cars i'm not really an expert on the painting i don't really do it too much i do like in Gran Turismo you can upload files to the website and then use those as decals in the game so that does save quite a lot of time and effort that is a good feature as for painting the cars, I don't really know. I don't really paint cars. So I don't really know the differences between the two systems or how good or bad they are. They both seem to do a good job of it. Um, I think that image uploader though is a good system to have in Gran Turismo. Also, you can manually change your, your helmet and your driver's suit, which I think is a superior system to the Forza 7 system where you can just choose, a, 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 you can tweak your driver tar with a range of very weird driver suits, like a Minecraft suit or a clown suit, and also some serious looking ones, but um, that's, that doesn't really match up to being able to really customize them fully yourself. As for saving liveries as well, it's way quicker on Gran Turismo. You can search for, just searching for them and scrolling through is so much quicker. Uh, you know, searching for um, liveries on, Grand, on, on Forza, it just takes ages. You can search about five and then you scroll across and it's just loading for, for forever. It's just kind of an annoying, encumbering system to try to find a good livery. Um, in Gran Turismo, it just seems a bit more user-friendly and, and quicker and just easier to do. Okay, next up, stats. And not that many people really care about this, but I think Gran Turismo, again, does a better job of this, the way that it tracks your statistics and more important statistics. A lot of the details in Forza are sort of how many perfect turns did you do at uh, Bernie's Alps, Stad Flats. You know, it's like, does anyone, is, is that really crucial? I don't think anyone really needs to know these kind of details. You know, the things you want to know are how many races have I done? How many race wins have I got? Pole positions. These kind of details, but perhaps my best lap times at each circuit. Uh, Grand Turismo does a better job of, this, of the stats. Might seem like a minor feature, but I think a lot of people like to know their statistics and review over them. Uh, so, this is something I feel like Forza 7 has stood still over compared to Forza 6. It hasn't really changed the way that it looks at stats. And I think that's something that it can definitely work on. Gran Turismo definitely edges it in that department. So the next subject is that of assists and how does each game kind of help you. And I, th I think both games are actually very good on this. I, I, I don't think there's actually that much difference. I feel as though they, they both help you with what you need. You can add a dynamic racing line, you can add brake markers. On the whole, I think if you're new to the game, both will kind of get get you started in quite, quite a nice way. And so I think on this front, both are good, both help you. There's a fair range of assists that you can change. I think Forza really caters to the like absolute beginner to racing games. Like you can change them to super easy and like it can break for you, it can almost steer for you. So Gran Turismo perhaps uh, doesn't quite go to that level, but it does still help if you're if you're still new to a racing game. So both games are good on, on, on that front. In terms of sort of the economy and sort of getting credits, both games, again, both games are hard, are fairly hard to get credits in, at the beginning at least. They both give you sort of rewards. So Forza, you get the forza -thon. and Every time you rank up, you can get another, get another car or a suggested car or some cash or some mods. And in Gran Turismo, you get sort of the daily reward. And so I'll say on the whole, Gran Turismo is a little bit harder to get money in. Whether or not that's an issue, 
I don't know. I, I think sometimes for me it is an issue because you know a new car pack comes out and I, I just can't afford the cars because there's just no money. So sometimes I do feel as though I need to grind a little bit. Whereas in Forza I've got to this safe place now where I've got as much money as I need. I've got all the cars and I don't really have to worry about it anymore. So Gran Turismo, the balance is, isn't quite there. Although Forza doesn't always have balance either. So you're not in an online race, you might only get like 16,000 credits for like 20 minutes of racing, which is kind of shocking. Uh, it, it can be quite bad in, in Gran Turismo as well. Not that this economy really matters too much, but I think if you can't afford the cars, then it's going to detract from your uh, enjoyment. Forza actually has has that system done slightly better, the way that they've managed sort of the economy of the game. Esports. How does each game tackle the esports problem or issue? I think Forza RC is definitely more established than the equivalent Gran Turismo. So Gran Turismo has had the World Tour live. They went to an event in Nürburgring earlier this year. That did look like a very good event. I do think that the prize pools are much bigger. The prize pools are well, way bigger in Forza though. Gran Turismo is a little bit behind on that front at the moment. So Forza, Forza are ahead in terms of esports. Forza, Forza is slightly ahead. There may well be lots of things that I've forgotten. If, if I have forgotten something and I remember it, I will put it in the description or, or as a comment below. After all that, the verdict. Which one do I think is better? You may have guessed, but I, I think it's Gran Turismo Sport. And you can probably tell that because of the, the amount of videos I make on Gran Turismo Sport compared to Forza. But I think Forza, the main issue with it is that it's it's got the word motorsport in the name, but it doesn't feel like a motorsport game. It feels like a car game. It feels like the car is the most important thing. In Gran Turismo, the racing is the most important thing. And that is a crucial difference. The racing quality is far higher. You're much more likely to have a proper close race in Gran Turismo. In Forza, it's a lot more relaxed, it's more open. You can have good races, but it's just not as easy to get to that place. So on the whole, I love both games. I love Forza, despite all the criticisms I give of it. I, I, I still love Forza Motorsport, and I will always still play it. Um, but for me, Gran Turismo Sport is the game that edges it. I would love to hear all of your thoughts, which game you think is better out of the two, or if you disagree or agree with anything I've said, or or, or you want to know my opinion on something I haven't mentioned, because there are so many things I could talk about. You know, this video could go on for two hours, go on for five hours. So if there's anything else you want to know, then please do ask in the comments. But there we go. I do hope you have enjoyed the video. I do hope you find it useful. Let me know your thoughts as always. Thank you so much for watching. If you do find it useful in any way, hit the like button and subscribe for more. I shall see you next time, guys. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.